Hello and welcome to this guide to the Dragon Soul. Now we will be starting with Moshok Heroic. When he reaches 90% health, he will split in two. Now, if you feign death when Korkrom aggroes you, as long as your pet is far enough from Korkrom, you can make him despawn and then only fight half the boss. But we're going to do this bug free. Both bosses are identical, but you will have to make sure that your pet has aggro on both of them. While remembering that when they cast Earthen Vortex, it will dismiss your pet, so usually put your pet on one of the bosses and misdirect the other. Hide behind the pillars, and if you can do it while keeping them in your line of sight, it's perfect. But DPS isn't an issue here. The reason you don't want aggro is because their stomp ability will one shot you if you are less than 25 yards away from them. So keep away from them at all times and remember that they get smaller the more damage they get. So don't let that trick you. The best idea is to have a range display add-on. Finally, you will have to deal with the crystals. Now, the crystals don't do that much damage and they do a lot less damage if you're standing near them. However, when they explode, they will bump you, so make sure that they don't bump you near the boss or you may get hit by a stomp and die. Both bosses share health. However, if you tighten the enrage, then you might want to DPS more shock because as long as he dies, even if you wipe, Kokom won't respawn. All in all, he is an extremely easy boss and you shouldn't have any problem with him. And if you do, you're probably not geared enough for the rest of the instance. The second boss is Yosage the Unsleeping. Now he will alternate between normal phase and blood phase. During blood phase he won't melee your pet and during normal phase he will melee him quite hard. However, since normal phase is pretty short, he won't kill it more than once between each blood phase. This fight revolves around how you deal with the different globals. Now, he will summon four of them during the blood phases, and the blue global and the purple global are perfectly harmless. The green global will deal some damage to you, and the red global will deal some damage to you if you stand in melee range of the boss, but will deal extreme damage if you're far from him. So basically, it will force you to stay in melee range, and if your pet dies, then you will have to use deterrence not to get hit. However, you will never need to kill any of his globals. The dangerous ones are the yellow global, which is, will cause him to deal more damage to your pet, and therefore, if it wasn't dying before, it may be dying now. And then it will also increase the rate with which he uses his abilities. A bit like if he had the assurance of consequence trinket. Which means that if it's combined with the red or the green global, you will start taking more damage. And finally, there's the black global. This one is kill on sight. If it reaches the boss, the boss will spawn a lot of adds that have no aggro table and for bursts of damage in random directions, random direction meaning the only player there. So you really have to kill every black global that spawns and if there is no black global you will have you to kill the yellow one. Now, the most dangerous combo is if you have to kill a black global, but there are also a yellow, a green, and a red one. It will mean intense damage on your hunter, so you can't really afford to have your pet dying right now. 
So it's the moment where you will have to use your quintuple last stand. Also, if you are having trouble with the end wage, remember that there is absolutely no need to kill the last set of globals since he will end wage right after. And also, at worst, you can afford sometimes not to kill any global as long as you don't have red, blue and yellow at the same time. Zonos Heroic is actually one of the hardest Heroic bosses here simply because the DPS requirements are very high. Now, the best way to deal with him is if you have enough gear simply every time he creates a void of gear making burns it back in the boss and then deal with the blood phase. However, if you don't have a lot of gear, you're going to need to spend as much time as you can on the boss, which means that you sometimes have to let a void of the amazing hit the wall, and then it will deal a little damage, but it will also mean that for a minute and a half, the boss will keep milling your pet, and the problem is that he deals more and more damage as time passes. So start with a turtle and when she starts taking too much damage, use your quintuple last stand. And then as soon as he casts the void on the unmaking, make sure to dismiss your pet before it dies. Because you're probably going to need a spirit beast for the blood phase. During this phase, there will be many tentacles. Handle it. Now, the first is the big claw tentacle. Now, it may not look like much, but if your pet isn't tanking it, it will literally rip through your hunter. So you must make sure that as soon as they spawn, the first thing you do is to put your pet on this claw and make sure that it doesn't leave the claw for as long as the claw is still alive. Then you will have to start killing with your hunters the eyes and the flames. The flays are more easily killed and therefore killing them quickly will reduce the damage you take and the eyes have a bolt that can be interrupted. You want to kill everything and then go back to the boss. Also, unless you really have to, don't stand in front of the boss because he has a cone attack. Now, by the time you get back on the boss your Stampede will still be on cooldown, so you won't be able to use a Quintupola stand, so you will probably have to chain two black phases. After that, all that is left is to focus on the boss and kill him before the Berserk. Now, of course, you don't have to do this in this Master spec, since uh, the range specs are actually better dealing with the black phases so it's about seeing with your current gear and spec just how many black phases you can survive while dealing with the enrage the fourth boss is agar the stormbinder now, before attacking her, you want to make sure that she's wielding her first axes. So simply pull her and feign death until she responds with them. During the first phases, you want to stay clear from the bubble in the middle, kill the crystals and avoid the ice waves. However, this time you will sometimes be slowed and even rooted in place by the ice patches and the burst that she puts on you. However, you can break free both with Master's Call and with Disengage if you have the post haste talent. However, if you're starting to slow down and an ice wave is catching up to you, don't run away. You have to run through the ice wave for minimum damage. Now, during her 
Normal fails, her most dangerous ability is the Ice Tomb. Right before it hits you, you will have to send a last heal on your pet, and if you can use a quintuple last stand, or even a normal last stand, or any defensive cooldown, now will be the time to use them, because your pet will have to survive long enough to break you free from the ice. Also, although her Shattered Ice ability is pretty harmless, when you start getting stacks of the Iceland's debuff, it will start dealing major damage, so if you're low on health, you can use the Terrence to survive. The Lightning Phase is different on Heroic than on Normal, because you have a lot more Conductors, so you have a lot less problems with pet placement. However, you also want to make sure that you're never having lightning coursing through you when you're not deactivating a pillar because now it hurts a lot more. And also there will be a pillar of lightnings falling from the sky, so make sure you don't get caught by them. If you get a first special phase, it will be a first phase, and she should be dead before the next lightning phase. So as long as you can deal with the Ice Tombs and the Lightning Phase, then you shouldn't have any trouble with this fight. The fifth boss is Ultraction, but he's at the limit of possible Hunter throwing right now, even with Heroic Gear. So if you have normal gear like me, it simply won't work. However, Blackhorn Heroic is doable. First, you will have to deal with adds. Now, the main problem during the first phase will be keeping the ship alive. Now, there are four waves your ship will take damage. The first way is sometimes the boss will deal a tremendous amount of damage on it, and it's totally unavoidable. F second, there are the drakes that put purple swords on the boat. These can be intercepted, but they deal a lot of damage and they increase your shadow damage taken, which is really important because when the boss asks his drake to create a big explosion, you will have to go stand in it, and if you have the debuff, then you need to use the Terrans or you will die. Finally, Twilight Sappers have to be destroyed before they destroy your ship. You can stun them with the Binding Hour, you can slow them, but you especially have to kill them. Now, killing the drakes quickly will be how you can survive this phase. So, when the first drakes spawn, use a model, of course, on one of them. And when the second set of drakes spawn, you really want to shoot a drake, try to nuke it as much as you can, and as soon as it is harpooned, kill him, and then focus on the second one. However, the problem will be the third wave, because once the two drakes are dead, the boss will come down, even if you still have the ground adds. So you want to kill one ASAP with a murder of course, and then make sure that the last one only dies either once you've cleared out the other ads, or before the ship gets destroyed. Now the good part is that you only need your ship to be at 1 HP when the last drake dies, because the boss won't deal any damage. However, when it dies, the boss will come. DPSing Blackhorn is useless because he will gain damage and then he will also get his health back from Goriona. So you want to make your pet tank the boss and then take Goriona quickly to 90%. Once you do that, she will land. Now, this is a moment to use all of your pets cool down because the boss will start stacking an armor debuff which means that your pet will be taking more and more damage 
and won't be able to survive long. So you need to get coriander to 25% before your pet dies. Then you will have to face against Blackhorn himself. Now he will cast shock waves that you need to avoid, but he will be especially deadly to your pet because he melees hard. Uh, for each percent of health he loses, he gains 1% damage, and of course, he stacks an armor debuff on your pet. So, if your pet is having trouble surviving, you will need to have multiple pets. So each of them can use last stand and of course once when you summon them they have all their cooldowns ready. So you will have to kill the boss before you run out of pets. If you manage to do that then you will get access to the spine. Then comes the spine. Depending on the personality, you are going to like it or not. But yeah, there's a lot of randomness in this fight. And then the power walls are just horrible. You will want at first to destroy two corruptions and do a barrel wall. Then simply kill a third corruption and make an amalgamation spawn. Put the amalgamation on the other side as the living corruption, and then you will want to start DPSing him. Now, this is a moment where things will get difficult because you need to have uh, some sort of boss mods that makes a countdown to barrel walls because you will need to quickly move from the right side to the left side every single second of the whole fight. If you spend more than 5 seconds on one side, it's a barrel wall, and if you're not in a hold, then you're dead. The strategy is the same that in Cataclysm, which is uh, you kill the bloods, they leave paddles, you put the amalgamation on the paddles, the, pa the amalgamation gains stacks. When he reaches 9 stacks, you put him near a plate, you kill it, and when it blows up the plate, you kill the tendon, and you move to the next plate. Uh, the DPS requirement and healing requirements are quite low. This will be more of a test of patience than anything. You will have to DPS your amalgamations to about 20%, then making it circle to get the stacks it needs, then kill it, and then destroy the tempo done while not getting gripped. The problem is that the grips are pretty random. They won't happen if you have the healing absorbed debuff on you, but as soon as it goes away, you'll either find yourself with another debuff or you will find yourself gripped. And if you're gripped, then you can't move. If you can't move, there's a barrel wall. You do not die. However, you will lose your amalgamation. So you have to wait until the barrel wall has ended. Quickly tell your pet to destroy the corruption and then start again. So it requires a little luck. Uh, but even if you get unlucky, then it only requires some patience. But it can be quite frustrating, especially since a single mistake means getting barrel walled to death. For dealing with the bloods, you will have to misdirect them on your pet or kill them. You cannot feign death because it usually makes the boss reset. And finally, if you really don't want to get gripped at a particular moment, like while you're DPSing a tendon, or while you're making the amalgamation drop the stacks, you can destroy a corruption, because when the next corruption spawns, it will have a 30 second cooldown on its fiery grip, and therefore you're sure to have 30 seconds where you can do everything you want. 
And then finally, there's the madness of Deathwing. If you're doing it on heroic, you will want a spec capable of dishing out a lot of AoE damage. So either go survival or beast mastery with blink strikes and fear of the hunt. Because you will really need it for the end of the fight. The first four platforms will be roughly the same. You want to start attacking a tentacle and then as soon as the mutated corruption spawns, you want to kill it. However, it will cast something called Impale and you must make sure that when it casts it, you feign death or you will take immense damage. You will also sometimes spawn a corrupting parasite However, you have to ignore it since it deals really low damage and it will die on its own. Deathwing will later cast an Elementium Bolt. Now, this bolt deals a lot of damage. However, it deals less damage than the Mutated Corruption, so if it lands while the Mutated Corruption is still alive, finish off the Mutated Corruption first and then destroy the Elementium Bolt. Then he will hemorrhage and summon regenerative bloods. Now these are a bit tricky to deal with since every time they reach 100 energy they regenerate. So while AoE them down is pretty effective if you have enough DPS, if you simply do not have any bursts or anything, you will have to start picking them off one by one while keeping your powerful attacks for when they have finished regenerating or just before they finish regenerating if you think you can kill them beforehand. Once the tentacle reaches 70% and 30% health, it will spawn blistering tentacles. Now, this will be killed by the Electraza, so simply don't worry about them. Sometimes they survive with a little health, but then you can just shoot an arrow at them and they die. Also, when the boss starts cutting Cataclysm, it the tentacle will take increased damage, so make sure to blow all remaining cooldowns because the tentacle must die before it finishes casting. Now, as far as platforms go, I preferred to start with Isera, then Kalegos, then Nosdomu, then Alexstrasza. However, you can also do Isera, Nosdomu, Alexstrasza, Kalegos. Uh, it depends on your DPS. If you do collect Ghost first, you will lose some DPS. So only do it if you aren't too tight on DPS. However, if you do Alexstrasza first, then she won't take care of the blistering tentacles. And since you won't be able to DPS them simply because you won't have the time, you might take a bit too much damage, so just see what you can DP, how much you can DPS and how much you can survive and find the combo that works well for you. However, be extra careful when you switch platforms because your pet won't follow you, so you will need to dismiss it if, you, if he isn't with you each time you reach a platform or he will just take too much time to reach you and you might lose a lot of DPS that way. How, however, no matter the order, once you finish all four tentacles, phase two will begin. Now, if you're overgeared, you might be able to kill the boss right here, right now. However, if you're not, you'll probably have a little problem with the enrager which means that you will want to live through it all long 30 minutes of it. To do that, first deal with the Azva spawn, 
the elementium fragments are easily killed simply use your dream ability when they are going to hit you with their shrapnel and then the elementium terrors will spawn now these are pretty dangerous because they have an extremely powerful dot they put on your pet so you want to take both of them in the time slowing zone kill one of them as fast as you can and then kill the second before your pet dies at worst if it dies you can always just raise it but you will still have to deal with these element of terrors very quickly then DPS the boss to 15% health and stop attacking it some congealing blood will spawn they will reach the boss don't touch them and the boss will go to 25% health now he has a corruption bar near his nameplate and you want that corruption bar to be at zero now sometimes it is it bugs it doesn't go back to zero and therefore you have to get him to 24% and then the bar will reach zero and in fact if you get him as less then 20% his energy bar will start going up and you will be taking too much damage to survive because once he's berserks his damage output is multiplied by 10. At zero energy is laughable, at one energy you can barely heal it and once you reach two energy you're going to die quickly. At worst, if you do that but and you really want to survive, you can try pushing him quickly to 15 energy, popping deterrence because as soon as he hits 15 energy, he, you will start taking 150k damage per second and let the congealing blads put him back at 25%. However, you simply, the best way to do it is to get him to 25%, then deal with the ads while trying to do as little AoE as possible on the boss. Because you will have to wait 30 minutes for the berserk to fall off, to fall off. And which means basically not dealing more than 5% of his health in 20 min 30 minutes. After 30 minutes has passed and you have survived, you will be able to start DPSing him again. However, you will also have to start dealing with the congealing bloods. Now, the congealing bloods can take a little practice. However, now that you don't have to worry about the berserk, you have all the time in the world to kill the boss. So even if you never reach this phase, you won't have to wor worry about wiping and starting again. Especially since you've just spent 30 long minutes dealing with ads and trying not to DPS the boss. The blood spawn at 5, 10 and 15% health. However, if more than 6 of them reach him, he will get 6% of his health back which means that you have, will have to deal with the same wave another time and the wave that came before. So it's a lot of incentive not to mess up. Luckily for you, I kind of messed up for you, so I will be able to take you what you have to do and not to do. Now, what you have to do is take the boss at 2% from a blood spawn. Then, wait until the adds spawn, kill the adds, then do the remaining 2% to the boss, and as soon as the bloods came, you have to drop a, a first shot to slow them down. You also have to make sure that your pet is on passive and near you. Whatever you do, do not put your pet on assist, or as soon as the blood is dead, your pet will start attacking Deathwing, and that's the last thing you want him to do, since you want him to kill the bloods, especially if you're in this mastery. So you will need a pet attack macro, so simply or simply put pet attack in your multi shot macro or whatever works to make sure that when the bloods are here, your 
pet spends 100% of his time on the blood. As long as you're multi-shotting like crazy and your pet is attacking the right target, they should die fairly quickly. Now, what not to do is to forget the first trap or not to put your pet on passive beforehand because sometimes when your pet attacks the boss, he falls like in the sea and he takes about 10 seconds to get back up if you call him. So you have to make sure that he's available when you want him. Also, do not put the boss at less than 2% from a blood spawn when ads are coming because if the ads spawn while you're dealing with the other ads, you will never be able to deal with it and the boss will get a lot of health back. Also, you want to keep your big cooldowns for the blood, which means that you will have to learn to deal with the elemental terrors without bestial guard. But with a little bit of training, you will have no problems to do one wave, then another, and then another, and finally you will be able to kill the boss. So that's it for the Dragon Soul Guide. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I will answer them as best as I am able. Have a nice day.